Hey guys, what's up? Kevin here. So in this lesson, we're going to generate an SSH key. So if you're not familiar with what an SSH key is, um, it's basically an authentication method used to gain access to like an encrypted uh, connection between two systems. So let's say I had my local uh, project and I wanted to reach out to GitHub um, remote repository. I could authenticate using what's called an SSH key. So I'm going to show you how to generate an SSH key uh, for Windows. Uh, the process is pretty much the same on other platforms, but we're just gonna walk you through this one first. What I'm gonna do when I generate these keys, I'm gonna show you the RSA method, and that's the type of encryption um, that's still being used out there, but um, they're saying it's a little bit legacy right now, depending on what your uh, platform's like. I'm gonna show you how to um, see what the keys look like, and then I will delete the keys because it's like, I don't want these to be available for access, right? So I will start by right-clicking um, and then opening Windows and Terminal, so Windows Terminal here. And just to give you guys a heads up, I'm using uh, PowerShell, and in this instance, I'm just pointing to my desktop, so users K Williams desktop. So what I'm gonna do is type in the command, uh, sorry, I missed that, SSH dash key gen, okay. And it will generate a public and private RSA key pair and it's going to ask me where I want to generate these files. So right now it wants to generate it inside of my users directory, inside of this folder, and inside this .ssh, you know, uh, hidden folder. I'm going to agree to that. It's going to do so. And then it's going to ask me to enter a passphrase. So for now, just because I'm going through this example, I'm going to leave the passphrase empty on, you know, the next few iterations that I create these keys. But just note that if someone gains access to your computer, they can also gain access to every system that uses that key. So um, as an additional like extra layer of security, I recommend that you actually, you know, attach a passphrase uh, to an SSH key, okay? But for now, we're just gonna walk through this fairly quickly. And we're gonna hit enter again. And notice that it generates a key fingerprint and here's the SHA-256, which is the fingerprint here. And it's tied to this machine. Also note that this SSH, sorry, SHA-256 uh, bit encryption is a hash. It's always going to have a SSHA-256, depending on how you work this out. And notice that the algorithm for encryption here is this RSA-3072, okay? So if you wanted to see what that looks like, we're just going to go up a directory, okay? And I'm going to use the Visual Studio's code alias. So I'm just using this word code, which will open up Visual Studio's for me go to my SSH folder, and I'm gonna take a look at the private key. So if you see the ID underscore RSA, that's the private key. If you see the extension dot PUB, that's the public key. But for now, we're gonna take a look at the private key. And this is what it generated. This is what the private key looks like. So if you ever wanted to see it, or you needed to copy it for some reason, or just you know visually look at it, this is how you do so. This is one of the ways you do so. And if you wanted to see what the public key looks like, um, same thing, but we'd say pub, and this would bring up the public key. And here's what it looks like as well. So I'm going to remove these keys, so because I, I don't really need them, and for this demonstration, I'm going to delete the keys anyway. So uh, here we are, and I'm just going to delete recursively the SSH directory. So that's gone. All right, so that's how you would kind of preview those keys and see what they are. I'm just going to do a quick clear just to get to the top of this again. We're going to create another type of um, SSH key, same process, but we're gonna use a different algorithm. Um, if you really wanna do some research behind that, it's the Edwards Curve Digital Signature Algorithm. So kind of the same process. So we go back into our terminal, we SSH, and we do a key gen. And in this time, we're gonna give a T flag for like menus and stuff like that. And we're gonna use a specific algorithm. And this one's gonna be the ED. 25519 algorithm and we're going to just use the dash c flag for some compression and we're just going to tag on the end of this like say an email address for some added security so i'm going to just make a fictitious email address here so i'm going to be like me at youth sorry at you.com okay and i'm just going to enter that so it does the same thing it generates a public and private you know pair but it's using this um, algorithm to do so, okay? And it's generating it in the same 
same directory, uh, same hidden folder .ssh, okay? And once again, with the past phrases, um, I don't recommend going through and just leaving them empty, but for now we're gonna do so. The SHA256 uh, is still the same, so it's still the same hash, roughly, um, but we're using a different algorithm to uh, generate this, and we could take a sneak peek as to what that looks like. I'm gonna SSH into that, and notice it's slightly different. It's ID underscore the algorithm, and I'm just gonna check it out. This is my private key, and as you can see, this private key is a little bit smaller, not as big, and kind of less stuff, but doesn't mean it's any less secure. That's that one there, and then we're gonna check out the pub version of that, which is the public key, and here it is, and a little bit smaller as well. At the end of the public key, it has that email address that I threw on there to kind of add some extra validation. So that's it. I'm gonna once again, you know, kind of just remove these keys because I don't need them right now for this. Uh, just to give you guys an example of how this is done. And I hope that you understood how to install SSH keys on Windows. Now you could do this, you know, through various other ways like PuTTY and different things. But um, this is a fairly quick and uh, concise way to do that if you're interested in generating keys uh, to use for an authentication method that is remote between systems. Okay. Thanks, guys, um, for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Take care. Bye.